Hello and welcome to another tutorial on how to create a game like Clash of Clans. This video is more focused on the client. I'm gonna open the client and try to set up a camera. So to start creating the camera controller, we need to create some controls first. So in the scripts folder, I'm just gonna create a new folder, call it input. And in this input folder, I'm creating a new input actions. Now let's create an, a script called camera controller. Now let's open this camera controller script. Like always, I'm gonna put it in a namespace. Let's go to the scene and create an empty game object. I'm just going to name it map. I'm going to reset the position. So as you might know, Clash of Clans is actually a 2D game. And to be honest, I was planning to make this game a 2D game as well. But 2D games requires a lot of artwork. And I thought I might just do it in 3D. Because it's a lot easier to find proper resources for 3D games. Now we can use a terrain as our ground but you can also use plane or any other type of asset you like it doesn't really matter but for now i'm just gonna use a simple plane and i'm just gonna select the camera and attach my camera controller script and now let's go to the input and create some inputs i'm gonna create a new action map and for our first action, we're going to detect whenever a player clicks on the screen or touches the screen with his finger. And that will be the start of the movement across the map. The action type is going to be button. And in the interactions, we're going to say press. And we leave it at press only. Now let's expand this. So we need to add two bindings. One of them is for mouse when we are in the editor. And the other one is for touch screen whenever we build for Android devices. So for the mouse is obviously the left click button. And let's add a new binding. For the touch screen, it's going to be primary touch touch contact now once we detected the player initialized the moving we need to get how much it actually moved the finger or the mouse to do that i'm going to create a new action and name it move delta and it's going to be a value of type vector 2 for the first binding i'm going to say mouse and it's going to be delta and i'm going to add another binding and it's going to be touch screen and of course primary touch delta now let's save this and i'm gonna close this now let's generate the class i'm gonna use the namespace i use for my scripts if you're not using a namespace you just leave that empty and i'm gonna hit apply as you can see a new script has been generated for us and it's called controls now let's go back to our camera control and here i'm gonna create a new control I'm gonna assign the value for the inputs in my awake function so now we need to start listening for when the button for moving is pressed we're gonna do that in our on enable so we're gonna say inputs and we already created the necessary inputs it's in the main and the button is called move so we're gonna say plus equals to underline and we need a function for that let's create one private void it's called move pressed and here in the move we're gonna say start it and we just pass this method which means whenever the button is pressed 
this method is going to be called so we also need to detect whenever a player removes his finger from the screen that means the moving stops so to do that we also going to create another method let me just copy this and instead of started we're gonna listen on cancelled so let me copy this And we're just going to use this as move cancelled. I'm just going to rename this to start it. Now let's create a boolean. I'm just going to name it moving. And let's assign this moving value in this functions. So simply just like that, we can detect if we are moving or not. And let's go to the update function. And here we're saying whenever the moving boolean is true. If you remember, we also created another input and we named it move delta and it's a vector two. Let's actually get that value. And we say whenever this move value is not equals to vector 2.0, then we're moving on the screen. So here we can write the code relative to the movement. But before we do that, we actually need a reference to the camera. And we need to set up the camera properly. So I'm just gonna create another variable here and I'm gonna name it camera. And I'm just gonna make it a serialized field so we would be able to assign the value in the inspector. Okay, now I'm gonna create three transforms and these transforms are gonna help me to navigate the camera around the map. And here in the await function, I'm just gonna assign the value to these transforms. And I'm going to create the start method. And let's create another method called initialize. And I'm just going to call this initialize within our start method. In this initialize, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set the moving to false. Then we can start parenting these transforms. So root are going to be the parent of pivot and pivot are going to be parent of target. Here in the awake function, I'm just going to change the camera dot orthographic and I'm going to set the value to true. Also, I'm going to change the near plane size to zero. So whenever we initialize the camera, I like to take a bunch of values. The first one is a vector 3 which indicates the center of the camera. Then I'm going to take four floats indicating the limit that camera can move to right, left, up or down from that center. Which means if the center is vector 3, 0 and the value for example right is 3, the camera can only show 3 units on the right of center. And we need to store this value, so I'm going to create the variables for them here. And now let's assign these values here in the initialize.
and in the start as we can see there is an error let's just say vector 3.0 and pass the default values of 10 10 and 10 and 10. we're gonna calculate the proper number and set it here later but for now let's just leave it like that and here of course we're gonna say on the lot root which is the root of the camera is going to be positioned on the center also we're just gonna set the rotation to zero now we also need an angle for our camera let's actually create another float and name it angle and it's usually 45 degrees let's just pass 45 here on the initialize and create the proper value here as well and assign the value in the initialize now let's set the pivot and we're gonna use the angle and the pivot local Euler angles we also need to change the position and rotation of our target so let's do that for the X and Y we're gonna say 0 but for the Z value we need to add a distance from the plane from the ground so I'm just gonna set minus 10 for now but the number doesn't really make any difference because we're using the orthographic camera the distance from the ground doesn't actually change the size of the camera's view now everything's are the way they're supposed to be let's actually play the game and let me explain what these three transforms are doing first we need to assign the camera of course we could have just get it with the get component but this is better so let's play it now let's take a look at the camera helper here as you can see there is the camera pivot and the camera target so basically our camera are gonna keep following this target let me actually parent that for now and reset everything and let me reduce the size to get a good look at the view this is how the camera is looking at the ground and if I change the pivot this is the X value the same value that we set here this angle we set it to 45 and this is the 45 so if we change this number the camera is actually changing the angle like that and whenever we want to move the camera around we can just select the camera helper and use that to move the camera around so let's actually do that let's move the camera around for that we're going to go to the update we already created the proper statements so depending on your screen resolution this move value is going to give you different values that will cause different results on different mobile devices and we don't want that to fix that we're just gonna divide the x by screen.white and do the same thing for the y-axis but this time we're gonna divide that by screen dot height this way we're gonna get a number between 0 and 1 and that number determines the percentage of the screen that the finger has moved on so now we're gonna just move our camera root we're gonna say minus equals to underline root and we're gonna move it on the right direction so we're gonna say right dot normalized and we're gonna multiply it by move dot x of course we need to multiply it by a move speed so let's just say move speed and let's go create this move speed up here and while we're here I'm just gonna create another variable called move smooth 
and let's make them serialized fields so we could change them in the inspector now let's go back and here we're gonna say root dot position minus equal to root right we're gonna say move the root which is a transform that controls the camera movement move it on the right side depending on the x value of our move input we're gonna do the same thing for our z input so our z input are gonna be forward and we're gonna use the move input y and that's it and now whenever we move our finger across the screen this root transform is gonna change and move around so as we set it here root is the parent of pivot and pivot is the parent of target so whenever root moves around these two are gonna move around with it and this target is where we want our camera to follow so here in the update function we're gonna check to see if the camera position is the same position as our target position and we're gonna do the same thing for the rotation So that's it let's test the camera movement and before we start the game we actually need to enable the input so let's go to on enable and the first thing we do we're gonna say input dot enable and we're also going to disable them on disable One more thing we need to consider is the camera transform dot position. We need to affect this move smooth that we created here. So I'm just gonna say camera transform position equals to vector three dot lap, and it's going to lap from camera transform dot position to the target position, and we're gonna use move smooth. And we're gonna multiply it by time that delta time. Now let's save this and go to the game. And I'm just gonna play this. As you can see, I can move around with my camera. This is gonna also work on touch screen devices. So if you get a build for your Android device, you're gonna have the same result. So this is it for this video. I'm gonna set up the zoom in the next video. Also going to set up some bounds so the camera won't go too far. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me, of course. And also please like and subscribe to support me. Thank you for watching.